Hi everyone, this is Maya Zahira with Psychic Protection Sanctuary, and we are now live in our free Facebook group, Psychic Protection Sanctuary Facebook group. Every Tuesday at 5.30 Pacific, we have a free Facebook Live class, and today's Facebook Live is going to be extra short. Um, I'm going to be doing that um, I think usually for our end of the month Facebook Live, so we have a real quickie one tonight. Uh, so we won't have as much discussion as usual. I'm just going to share some things with you in and out. Uh, before we dive in, I want to give a quick shout out to everybody who's watching the replay, wherever you're watching the replay, uh, especially a shout out to all of the subscribers on the YouTube channel, which is also called Psychic Protection Sanctuary. And okay, so let's dive into today's topic. Today I want to talk about how false light, false light entities cause delusions. How false light entities cause delusions. So before we dive in, I want to give you just a little quick intro. Once again, this is Maya Zahira, and I specialize in helping people with issues around psychic protection, people who are experiencing unwanted paranormal activity um, and having unusual spiritual experiences. Uh, there's a broad range of unusual experience, uh, spiritual experiences that people can have. One of the areas where I teach people is helping them to develop discernment. So this topic today is going to help you develop your discernment in what spiritual entities and messages are trying to come through you. And also when you are, are engaging with um, other spiritual people, perhaps going to a spiritual event and meeting different people, this, is quite, this information is going to help you in discerning who is actually bringing forth valid spiritual information and who is actually spouting off about their delusions, okay? If you would like to go deeper than what we discuss in today's video, you can find out more at my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com, and my flagship program where you can receive mentoring is called Spiritual Empowerment Academy. You can find that information on my website. Okay, so let's talk about how false light entities cause delusions. I would, I would be remiss if I didn't give a medical disclaimer here because I'm throwing the word delusions around left and right. I am not a medical professional. I am not a mental health professional. I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist. I am not a therapist. I am not a doctor. So I'm using the word delusions in a slang or casual sort of way and I'm not using it as a means of diagnosis. I'm not diagnosing anyone as um, medically delusional as far as how a uh, mental health specialist might diagnose someone as having psychosis or schizophrenia or something like that. So that's not where I'm coming from here. Um, anyone who's not a mental health specialist is not qualified to give any sorts of diagnoses like that, okay? My specialty, however, is in spiritual matters, and I happen to be very good at spiritual discernment and at discerning what is false light and what is genuine. 
Okay, so now that I've gone over the medical disclaimer, let's give a quick definition of what is false light. So then we can talk about how false light actually causes these delusional types of situations. I define false light as any type of spiritual presence, spiritual entity that is not what it presents itself to be. And specifically, a false light entity is going to be any non-beneficial spiritual being, a dark spiritual being that is posing as a being of light. So this could be a demon, this could be an evil spirit, this could be a jinn, this can be any type of negative spiritual being that is pretending to be someone's spirit guide, that is pretending to be an angel or a group of angels, any sort of dark being that is pretending to be one or more ascended masters, any spiritual being that's pretend, any negative spiritual being that's pretending to be an alien, a benevolent alien, or a council of aliens. Okay, so this being a little bit more specific, this could be a negative spiritual entity that is pretending to be um, some sort of deity or, um, gosh, so I've actually known people who thought that they were working with Mary Magdalene, with the actual essence of Mary Magdalene, and it was actually a false light entity, okay? I've known people who believed that they were working with Jesus, and it was not the actual authentic Jesus, it was a false light entity. I've known many people who thought that they were channeling valid messages from one or more alien beings, when in fact they were, uh, they were dealing with one or more imposter entities playing a game. So any benevolent spiritual being from any tradition, I mentioned some that were Christian oriented because that's how, that's the tradition that I grew up in, but any spiritual, benevolent spiritual being from any tradition um, can, can show up as actually authentic, like it's actually who they say they are, or it can be a hijacked situation where it's actually a negative entity acting as an imposter, pretending to be that benevolent being, okay? So hopefully that gives a clear definition of false light entities. Why, why do false light entities, these, these dark entities disguised as light, why do they do it? For them, it's a game. Honestly, they, they think it's hilarious to mess with humanity. They are on purpose leading people astray, keeping people chasing their tail, um, who, people who think that they're bringing forth these amazing, beautiful messages that, that are actually not even valid. They're 80% truth and 20% intentional lies. So for the most part, it's, it's one big joke to them. They, uh, these dark entities think that it's hilarious to cause confusion. Uh, they will specifically target someone who is a genuine, who is a genuine seeker of spiritual matters, someone who genuinely uh, wants to do good in the world and a false light entity will seek out someone like that, hook into them at, for the purpose not only of confusing humanity as a whole, but to keep that individual from fulfilling their actual purpose. They're, they are instead chasing false, a whole false narrative, okay? Um, so that's just my quickie definition of what a false light entity is, but I give a very thorough explanation in my recent book, my second book, The Psychic Attack Source Book, which you can get on Amazon 
and all of the other online booksellers. It's not for sale with the like in-person bookstores, at least not yet, but you can get it anywhere online. <clears throat> so let's talk about these delusions that we're talking about. Now, as a lay person, as someone who's not a mental health specialist, I'm using the word delusion in a casual way to define ex um, the experience of seeing, feeling, hearing things that actually are not really happening. Hi, Leisha. Hi, Lori. Hi, Charlie, John. Hi, Stacy. Hi, everybody. So when I say delusions, I'm talking about uh, f experiences that the person believes are real, but that are actually not real. And so the false light entity, one or more false light entities, hooks into a person and then takes that person down an entire delusional rabbit hole. Now I want to peek at my notes here because I've got some important details. So that there's a couple of things that this false light entity will do to the person. They will feed into the person's ego. And let's face it, we all have a bit of ego. And a lot of times if someone is um, not very confident, if they don't have a very uh, balanced level of confidence, it's actually very easy to hook into the person's ego to try to make them feel better about themselves, not in a good way. And so this false light entity will feed into the person's ego and make them think delusionally because it's not really happening. This false light entity will pretend to be any number of beings. Either it'll pretend to be one being all the time or it'll switch around. And I've seen both both experiences. So they will f they will feed into the person's ego and they will um, give the person the delusion, make the person believe that they are the reincarnation of Cleopatra, that they are the reincarnation that, that this person with the false light entity hooked into them. The false light entity will make the person believe that they're the reincarnation of Jesus, that they are the Holy Spirit incarnate, that they are the reincarnation of a certain Egyptian god or goddess, that they are a particular deity incarnated, um, all of these different things. And you may have run into somebody or somebody's in the in, sp in your spiritual communities who has talked about things like this okay and so now it's going to be up to you to build your discernment and decide what is valid and what not is not valid because i'm not going to tell you who's delusional and who's not you're going to have to decide this for yourself because honestly there are a ton of people i'm going to say something kind of um uh different here, but there are a lot of people in the, the spiritual communities who believe that they are having valid experiences when they're actually experiencing delusions. And it's because they have one or more very, very, very convincing false light entities hooked into them. <clears throat> I feel very confident in telling you that I know a lot about these false light entities. I've had multiple experiences with them and there was one experience that I had just a couple of years ago that was very informative. It was um, it was it was so fascinating because I was very lucid during all of it. I was very grounded and I could see exactly what was happening. And I had gone to a metaphysical shop, a spiritual, it was a new age shop. And there was an entity there at that shop. And it was fascinating to observe this because I think that entity, that false light entity had never, as far as I could guess, that false light entity had never encountered anyone 
that could see it and that knew that it was fake. And the reason why I say that I think it had never encountered anyone like me is because it kept trying. It kept trying. It tried every trick in the book. And it wouldn't have done that if it knew that that I know all about it. <laughs> and so, like, at first, it showed up. It appeared as a council of alien beings. And it said that it was going to... Um, help me to bring special messages through the the uh to, it was going to help me bring these important spiritual messages through to help humanity and to share with planet earth now anybody who really has a heart of gold and wants to help the world what their their ego would get stoked by that i mean even if they're not an egotistical person somebody who has a heart of gold who wants to help humanity would go oh wow that's really important and i'll be doing really important work right i saw right through that i was like no i don't actually believe that you are who you're presenting yourself to be and then it then changed form and it pretended to be a whole group of these um ancient gods and goddesses from like the the greek pantheon and i'm like okay that's weird i don't know what that's about and then uh and i said i don't believe that you are who you say that you are and so then it was like okay well this isn't working so i'm going to try to scare maya so then it changed his form into a demon like, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to attack you. I forget what it said, but it was trying to scare me. And I'm like, no, like, I know that you're not actually a demon. You're pretending to be a demon. You see how interesting, this, how manipulative and sociopathic this thing was? It was trying everything in the book to like either through um, positives or negatives to try to get me to follow along and and um let it play its game and i think the most interesting thing about that circumstance and i'm not i don't have time to go through like it pretended to be several things i've just shared part of the story but the most fascinating part of it was i was having this aha moment when this was happening and i was saying wow this is so fascinating no wonder i mean i, mean, I could see i could see how convincing this entity and these kinds of entities would be even to someone or someone's who are uh who would consider themselves to be to be very discerning and this is why like i i have plenty of people in my world uh, in the spiritual field who are good people who are fairly grounded uh, but they they just don't know how convincing this stuff is. And so meanwhile, they're they're channeling messages from these false light, these different false light entities. It was fascinating to observe how convincing it really could be. Um, so that was very informative. OK, so let's go back to our list. So I talked about how um these false light entities love to take a person down a delusional rabbit hole they will feed into the person's ego make the person believe that they are either the reincarnation of some special um uh, figure in history or some special spiritual being or they will feed into the person's ego and make them think that they are a special person chosen to channel an important message or important messages for humanity and there are a ton of people right now on the planet channeling quote messages for humanity and these are very well-meaning and caring people who who want to believe that they are channeling benevolent and true messages when actually what's happening is a false light entity is feeding the person delusions, okay? Outright 
delusions. It is a whole string. Uh, it depends on how the messages are coming through the person, but it's a whole string of delusional visuals, auditory messages, etc., uh, and feelings, etc., etc. Basically, the person's entire intuition and psychic perception is being hijacked. I'm going to repeat that again. Basically, the person's entire intuition and psychic perception is being hijacked. And that's what I'm calling delusions. Okay, I what, what I mean by delusions is that uh, they are being fed experiences that are not real. And I'm going to take a moment and distinguish here that there are many, 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 many spiritual experiences that are absolutely real, where a person is receiving messages in some way, shape or form that are authentic and real. That is different than these kinds of delusional messages that I'm talking about. The biggest problem here is that people will hear me talk about this and they will think of it as something that's happening outside of themselves, like, oh, that happens only to people who are naive and stupid and not paying attention. And those are the people over there that are having these delusional spiritual experiences, these delusional spiritual channelings. And they don't want to stop. And I'm not saying that anyone does or doesn't have delusional experiences. But what I'm saying is that most people avoid considering their own experiences. Like, is what I'm experiencing, is it real? Are these entities that I'm connecting with, are they real? Is there any chance that this could be false? And the people that need to do the biggest questioning are the people who are bringing forth regular, ongoing channeling messages and people who are spiritual workers who are bringing forth psychic information on a regular basis. And it's a weird position that I'm in because I will see uh, people bringing forth um, information from a very hijacked place. It's... It's like little tidbits of correct information and all the rest of it is very strange nonsense. And um, like fa fascinating fantasies, fascinating fantasies, but not actually real. So the biggest takeaway here, and I'm going to stop for a second and say, if anybody has any questions, I can address a couple of quick questions before I run run off to the rest of my evening. Um, so feel you can start typing because it takes it takes a little while for the the delay effect. Um, the biggest takeaway here for everybody watching this is how important it is for you to develop your own discernment. You have to learn what is a false light entity. What are the signs and indications that an entity is actually an imposter? And I, I definitely recommend that you read the chapter about false light entities in the Psychic Attack source book. It's really important that you be open to questioning everything, including questioning your own experiences. I often say that I refer to myself as an open-minded skeptic, even of my own experiences. So if I have had some type of um, spiritual experience, then I, I'll be asking questions like, okay, did that really happen? Was there anything else going on? Uh, this, is, this is really important. And um, this self-questioning is, is what's going to help you develop your discernment. But we also need to learn to question everyone else too. And we don't need to worry. This is not about being judgy. We're not judge, being judgmental. We're, we're being dis, discerning. Discernment is important 
because it helps to keep you safe. Discernment is vital. You must be discerning. So for example, when you see a message on social media and you read it and go, oh, that's great. And then you share it with all your friends. I would suggest that you first, if, if it's a spiritual message, first read it and evaluate where is that message coming from? Is it saying that it's a channeled message? Is it a valid channeled message? Where, where is that information coming from? We need to ask questions about everything. You need to question everything. Question, question. Stephanie Hardy says, hi, and yes, your own discernment is so important. I learn so much every time I read your books. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, so the biggest takeaway is develop your own discernment. Learn the, the information about false light entities. Learn uh, how to develop your own intuitive skills. Um, I teach all of that in both my books. I have information about false light in both of my books, The Psychic Attack Source Book and Darkness Disguised as Light. And then I also have a whole section on develop, developing your intuition in my first book, Darkness Disguised as Light. So um, for very little money, you can get all, all of that, all of that information. Um, that's why I put those books out there. So you can have a c concise way of learning how to develop your discernment. So the biggest takeaways are develop your discernment, question everything, question your own experiences, question other people's experiences, question whatever spiritual information is floating around there uh, in spiritual circles and online. Question everything. It doesn't mean that you're judging. It means that you're developing your discernment and, and deciding, is this actual authentic information? Is this actual, is this an authentic situation? Is this real or is it imposter? And not only that, but is it a match for me? It might be authentic information, but maybe it's not a match. Maybe it's not at whatever level that you're at. So develop your discernment so you can discern so you can decide is this authentic or is it false light if it is authentic is it the right match for me okay so the opposite of delusions the opposite of someone who is unfortunately calling forth lots of of delusional spiritual experiences the opposite of that is someone who is super grounded, super grounded, connected, not only with the earth, but really anchored in their own essence and not reaching out to all these random entities for information, super anchored within themselves. So the person who is opposite of delusions is very anchored into earth energy, anchored into themselves, anchored into reality anchored into clear mindedness, clear perception without all of this random information coming in from all these weird, uh, unfortunately weird, not real spiritual sources. So focus on getting grounded, focusing on anchoring into your own truth, focus on clearing your intuitive perception, your mental perception so that you can see things clearly. Thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, this was one of those lessons where I just needed to get on my soapbox and talk, talk, talk. Um, join me again next week where we will have a longer Facebook Live where we'll have a bit more of a discussion format. Mark your calendar, set an alarm. This Facebook Live happens every Tuesday at 5.30 Pacific adjust for your time zone. And then I always upload the recording afterward to my YouTube channel, which is called Psychic Protection Sanctuary. So the Facebook group and the YouTube channel are called the same thing, basically Psychic Protection Sanctuary. 
And if you would like to learn how to work with me more deeply, you can find information about all sorts of things, including my free offerings, very low cost and donation based offerings and my my flagship program, my group mentoring program as well. You can find information about all those different things on my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. And also, uh, if you sign up for the email newsletter, I will send you a free quiz that helps you understand the various symptoms of psychic attack so that if you're having problems right now, you'll be able to discern if you are under attack. And if you're not having issues right now, understanding these different symptoms will help you be able to ward off any kind of issue in the future if anything should be trying to ramp up. Thanks again, everybody. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and I will see you all online. As always, I'm sending you all my love.